Hello, everyone, and welcome to this BAFTA event for The Traitor. Um, we will be taking questions, and there's a Q&A button below this screen. So um, if you do want to send a question in, do, and we'll get through as many as we can over the course of this event. The arrest and subsequent testimony of Cosa Nostra soldier turned informant uh, Tommaso Buscetta, along with the assassination of investigating judge Giovanni Falcone, was a tipping point in the fate of organized crime in Italy. The Traitor is an epic account of Bruschetta's journey, his collaboration with Falcone, and the fall of his actions. And it unfolds across a vast canvas, once again highlighting the brilliance of Marco Bellocchio as a filmmaker, his crew, and also the superb cast. And to talk about the film, I'm delighted to welcome writer-director Marco Bellocchio, lead actors Pier Francesco Favino and Maria Fernanda Candida, um, editor Francesca Calvelli, and producer Simone Gattoni. Hello, all. Hello. Hi, everyone. Hi. Thank Hello. you for joining us today. Our pleasure. Uh, Mark, perhaps, Marco, we'll start with you. What attracted you to making a drama about this pivotal period in Tommaso Bruchetta's life? Ma, yeah, l'attrazione è stata um, non immediata. Come eh, traduce tutto lei? Dopo eh, tutti facciamo i... frasi magari conseguenti e poi traduco, va bene? No, voglio dire semplicemente che l'attrazione non è stata immediata, nel senso che un, il secondo produttore, oltre a Simone Gattoni, si chiama Giuseppe Beppe Caschetto, eh, mi suggerì questo nome, questo titolo anche, eh, Buscetta, eh, questo che aveva in qualche modo collaborato con con Giovanni Falcone, ed era un personaggio famoso in Italia, ma non solo in Italia. Ecco. Dall'inchiesta, dal... mi sono informato, ho letto, ho studiato, siamo andati anche un po' in giro per la Sicilia, per l'Italia, abbiamo interrogato tutta una serie di soggetti che avevano conosciuto, sia eh, soprattutto da parte eh, dei buoni, no? non, non, i criminali, no, non ne abbiamo incontrati di criminali, Sì, forse qualcuno, sì, però era un po' un bambito spinto, sì, un, un pentito che non sapeva neanche più cosa... Insomma, in poche parole, questa conoscere ha creato per me materia per, eh, per scrivere una sceneggiatura di fare il film, ecco, che però, ripeto, è un film, e chiudo, molto per me eh, unico, perché non ha quella partenza, eh, diciamo, autobiografica, non ha quelle radici, quelle connessioni strettamente biografiche che hanno molti dei miei film. Questa è stata la sfida più, più bella, anche più affascinante, insomma, di, di fare un film apparentemente e assolutamente estraneo alla mia vita, alla mia cultura, ecco. Uh, so the the topic of um, the traitor uh, did not came uh, did not come immediate to to Marco. It was actually suggested by the second producer Beppe Caschetto, and together they they traveled around Italy and they started talking to um, uh, people who met uh, Buscetta on the side of the goods, um, and um, so that's how um, the story came about. Um, and that's how Marco got to know the subject. Um, but what's unique to, to Marco about this movie is that uh, it's not uh, autobiographic uh, and considering all his filmography, that's a unique piece then because it comes from something that uh, it's uh, external to his story and that was the biggest challenge as well. Yeah, one of the things I found so fascinating with the film is that it's telling a life across a huge canvas. And yet at the same time, there's this incredible intimacy um, to the film. And I know there were four main writers and also two collaborators, one for the Brazilian section. Um, could you talk a little bit about how the writing process worked with so many of you involved in, in creating this film about this life? Beh, è proprio questo che ribadisco il... Uh l'aggregazione la, creativa che poi ha portato al film è stata eh, eh, estremamente eh, 
più che complessa eh, di tanti cre creatori insomma adesso non voglio star qui a menarla con eh, ne ho qui quattro che eh, beh, certamente Pier Francesco io ho corso il rischio devo dirlo perché gli ho fatto due provini eh, però lui è stato veramente un, un interprete creatore eh, ma creatore è stata anche Fernanda facendo la moglie a modo suo molto diversa perché lei di una bellezza assoluta e la moglie di Buscetta che era una bella donna ma non era così bella come sei tu poi è stato estremamente creativo l'apporto eh, editing di, di, di Francesca Calvelli nel senso che abbiamo lavorato molto sul film e anche con eh, attraversando momenti anche di, di forte dialettica non solo tra di noi ma anche con l'esterno ed è stato creativo anche il giovane piccolo Simone Gattoni che eh, insomma è ormai una realtà eh, produttiva importantissima in Italia e nel mondo quindi anche lui è stato creativo voglio dire è stato un lavoro ma senza nessuna retorica senza nessuna falsa democrazia veramente eh, di combinazione, di collaborazione, si dice sempre retoricamente che i film, sì, il cinema è un'arte un collettiva, sì, 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 d'accordo, però ci sono dei film più collettivi, altri meno collettivi, questo eh, lo è stato se, per me, per la mia esperienza, per la mia storia cinematografica di più. Um, so what Mark is saying is that uh, the Tracer was a, um, a, a collaborative project, Uh, and of course, cinema is a collaborative art, but for him, uh, this film was more collaborative than others. And four of his creators, four of his collaborators are of course here tonight. So starting from uh, Marco, um, uh, starting from uh, Pier Francesco, um, of course, he, he was a creator in, in the sense that he created his own uh, character and the same was uh, for Maria Fernanda who interpreted um, Buscetta's wife. Um, same for um, Francesca, um, the editor, and uh, for um, Simone, uh, who is uh, the producer. And Simone, perhaps I can come to you. This is your, if I'm not mistaken, your third feature as a producer with Marco. You've also produced a number of shorts with him. Um, could you talk about your attraction to this project? Uh, the the attraction was uh, when Beppe came and uh, asked us if we were um, interested, and Marco was interested in uh, doing uh, this kind of project. It was immediately attractive because uh, in Italy we knew Bush we, we know Buscetta very much, and uh, we are uh, not me because I was born uh, the year before the Maxi trial, but. Uh, Uh, you know, everybody remembers his also friendship uh, or his collaboration with Falcone. Uh, it, it was very much interesting to um, produce a project that was shot in many, many different uh, locations and countries. And that was also uh, the, um, the chance to talk about uh, one of the most important pages of the Italian recent history. So that was very much, uh, uh, to me, uh, interesting also to meet the people and talk to the people that uh, really made the trial against the Mafia members, uh, uh, per people that knew Buscetta in person. So it was also uh, the, the, the possibility to go deeper in, uh, inside uh, a chapter of Italian history talking straight to the to the uh, protagonist of those stories. And then from more, uh, you know, production-wise point of view, uh, it's, um, you know, an international co-production. So putting together three countries, uh, shooting here, shooting there in Brazil, was also very much uh, teaching for us to uh, understand how people works uh, in Brazil, in uh, Germany, and uh, to make a big experience. And Pier Francesco and Maria, um... Before we come on to the, the film itself, um, I think just from a, a British audience's perspective, I, I remember Falcone and I remember the assassination, but I, I didn't have much knowledge 
about who the people it was that Falconi was investigating and Ruschetta at all. So that was the only piece of news really following his assassination that I knew about him. Um, could you both of you talk about your familiarity with this story um, and, and just in the context of, of growing up as this was happening? Perhaps, Pierre Francesca, we'll start with you. Well, uh, I'm not as young as our producer. But uh, I was already there, <laughs> and um, and uh, and I remember when 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 the assassination of Falcone happened, and uh, as well and as when when Paolo Borsellino was killed. Uh, mafia has always been present in our lives, not physically, uh, but we've always known about it. Uh, it's not just a movie genre. We've been repeating this throughout every meeting that we've done. It's something that's really uh, invasive in, in, in our life uh, as a country. And, uh, but when we say that people knew Bouchetta, uh, I think that we, we kind of overestimate his figure. Uh, we, we knew what happened, but you have to imagine that since uh, Bouchetta came into the scenery, uh, no one uh, into the scenario, no, 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 no one really knew, or uh, there, there was no evidence about the fact that the mafia existed. So, the judges knew it, and they were searching for it and looking for it and, and trying to find a way to, to, uh, to have the evidence of the existence of mafia. But since then, there was nobody that had um, proven the, the, the existence of mafia. So that is a very big step for us, also in recognizing it. Now we know, uh, as I was saying uh, before, we, we do lots of mafia movies. We, it's, it's a movie genre. But for us, it's different. And I remember, I was young. I remember when 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 Falcone was killed, and I, and I felt that something was happening to me directly, to my idea of justice, to the idea that my country could fight uh, that criminal organization. So it was very interesting to the shoes of someone who's so far from my my point of view and to try to understand what it means to be a man that belongs to that criminal organization and wants to, to belong to it and, uh, and what kind of life he leads, what, what, what's his morality, what's his, uh, what he believes in. Uh, and it's really, the, 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 it's very, very far from my, my life. And I think it's a unique opportunity for an actor. And Maria, for you, could you talk a little bit about your knowledge of the story? But also, um, it, it, it's one of the things that makes the film so compelling is that even though it's an incredibly subjective tale, um, it's expansive enough to actually present your, your character's perspective as well, and the, the perspective of families as well as the men. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So just to start with the first question, I, I, didn't rem I don't remember in my childhood, you know, about Bouchetta. But now when I did the film, when I told people that I was doing this film, then I had this reaction about lots of people in Brazil. Oh, really? Oh my God, you're doing this film about Bouchetta? So I, I just realized that a lot of people, a lot of people in Brazil, they know this story, they remember it. And, and so, um, I, I had this experience that to, to feel the reaction nowadays, not before when I was a child, I, I, really, I don't remember that. And then to, to tell you about uh, Maria Cristina, the, the Buscetta's wife. So it was a big challenge uh, to make this character because, you know, it's, it's this woman that you would never say that she would fall in love with a man like that, with a criminal. She comes from this rich and very, um, very educated family, you know, lawyer's family, her father, uh, uncles, everybody, you know, she was a lawyer herself. So imagine, you know, a woman from a family like that with her background, just falling in love with a criminal from the mafia. So that's a question that has no answer. So she stood with him for her life. And, and then we have this 
sexist universe, very aggressive, very violent. And she is like very much alone as a woman in this, this criminal world. And I think that makes us think about of what we, we, we want for us, you know, this, this movie give this, this reality for us, this domination logic should, should come to an end because it, the film is just showing us that. And, and I mean, it was such a beautiful experience, very challenging, as I said, traveling all around these countries, meeting all these crews and working with Piet Francesco, working with our maestro, this master Marco Bellocchio and great, really great experience. Um, I want to come back to um, specifics of um, characterization in, in a short while, but um, I just want to bring Francesca into the conversation. Um, and perhaps this is for Francesca and Marco. Um, I've already mentioned that this is a vast story told on an intimate scale. Um, and the one thing, I've, I've seen the film three times now, and the one thing that I, I just can't get my head around is the rhythm of the film, the way it speeds up, the way it gives us time to understand every aspect of this world. And yet it grips us like a vice for two and a half hours. Um, so what I want to know is how do you find the right rhythm to tell such a huge story like this and particularly on an intimate scale? So Francesca, perhaps we'll start with you first and then Marco. Mi traducete perché ho, ho capito in parte e non vorrei rispondere una cosa per un'altra. Ritmo, diceva. Sì, eh, come ho cercato e come ho trovato il ritmo di questa oh, storia. Okay. E poi cos'altro ha detto? No, ti, ti devi aprire il microfono perché sei mutata. <ride> Ha visto tre volte il film e questo... Scusa, mi sta, mi sta traducendo la, la signorina, aspetta. Se esatto, lo perché um, Iena ha visto tre volte il film e quello che l'ha colpito appunto è il ritmo di una storia così eh, intima ma comunque così ritmata. Come si trova in una storia così personale un ritmo così calzante? Mm. Um, allora, secondo me eh, eh, il film aveva comunque in sé una sua musicalità, un ritmo musicale che andava cercato, l'abbiamo cercato e spero che, di averlo anche trovato, eh, perché, eh, e questo è avvenuto anche eh, lavorando con la musica di Piovani e con delle musiche di repertorio, però voglio dire che comunque il film aveva quel, quel materiale, tutto quel girato, quelle immagini, quei processi, quelle situazioni e l'alternanza delle varie situazioni costituiva comunque eh, un qual quasi come un'opera, quasi come un'opera musicale, quindi aveva comunque già dentro un grande ritmo che noi abbiamo potenziato lavorando sull'alternanza delle varie situazioni della vita di Buscetta, che ovviamente sono state scelte in sceneggiatura perché la vita di Buscetta era lunghissima, è stata lunghissima, quindi si sono fatte delle scelte. Quello che noi abbiamo fatto è stato cercare di, eh, di creare una storia che avesse un ritmo e un flusso possibile e, e ehm, attraente saltando nei vari, nel, 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 nei vari punti della storia della vita del personaggio. Questo è dipeso anche, la riuscita di questo ha a che fare anche col ritmo e col suono e con anche le didascalie e l'elemento grafico che noi abbiamo inserito. Quindi, è un complesso di, di cose che ci ha permesso di arrivare a quel ritmo che poi il film ha, perché comunque è un film lungo e, e quindi dovevamo comunque cercare di, di, di avere un ritmo che, che lo tenesse, insomma. Ecco. Però ripeto, eh, io vedo il film quasi come un'opera musicale, cioè al di là della musica anche proprio le scene, la recitazione di Pierfrancesco, di, di Maria Fernanda, eh, degli altri attori, le situazioni che si che sono tante e che, che, che si susseguono. Lì poi il discorso era quello di comunque di parlare di una storia vera e quindi comunque di rispettare determinate cose, ma anche di non perdere di vista la possibilità, e lo sguardo, la possibilità creativa, lo sguardo dell'autore. Quindi abbiamo mischiato eh, delle cose vere a delle cose comunque... A degli, a degli episodi o a delle immagini che venivano dalla fantasia dell'autore. Quindi tutto questo poi eh, ha trovato 
diciamo, con vari step di montaggio, perché noi avevamo un primo montato che durava più di tre ore, con vari passaggi, vari eh, movimenti internamente delle scene, de, delle, di una scena con un'altra, abbiamo anche cambiato delle cose rispetto alla sceneggiatura, diverse cose si sono spostate, diciamo, e alla fine è uscita fuori questa cosa qua. So Francesca is saying that, um, in her opinion, uh, the traitor has a musicality in it. Of course, they have to look for it um, and they hope they have found it. But um, uh, it's even Buscetta's life um, and the way they uh, try to portray it that has a sort of musicality in it. So what they've tried to do uh, was jumping from um, uh, the different parts of his life So let's say, for instance, the, the parts he spent in, uh, in Brazil, the, spans, the, the parts he then spends, uh, spent in Italy. Um, and by doing so, they really augmented and amplified um, the musicality of the work, which of course, um, um, and what has also helped is the music by Piovani, and then even the graphics that they add to the film, Um, and um, what also helped was also the fact that, yes, of course, it was a biopic, so there were some historical elements to um, respect uh, and uh, to make sure that were inserted in the film, but um, uh, there were also elements uh, of fantasy that were, of course, added by um, um, the director that helped and um, Uh, really turned the film into uh, um, a piece of music, in your opinion. Uh, keeping with this mind with the rhythm of the film, um, the courtrooms, the actual the drama of the trial lasted, I, 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 if I'm not mistaken, I think about a year. So Marco, how do you cut all that together in a sequence in which you have chaos, comedy, drama, all playing out together almost at the same time on a setting that looks like the stage of an opera. Sì, è vero, questo quello che diceva Francesca è vero. Non è che lo abbiamo pensato prima, però eh, il suo eh, la sua rappresentazione eh, più complessa e eh, il suo riferimento musicale è la grande eh, le grandi sequenze del maxi processo a Palermo, dove tra l'altro abbiamo avuto la fortuna di poter girare nello stesso car nello stesso la stessa aura dove in realtà eh, il processo avvenne e lì eh, eh, abbiamo sintetizzato eh, come lei diceva eh, aspetti grotteschi, aspetti tragici, aspetti di teatro che veniva utilizzato spesso dai mafiosi proprio per eh, rallentare eh, e cercare di impedire che questo processo si concludesse e, e penso che eh, è eh, un risultato eh, di cui io sono molto soddisfatto eh, proprio perché per quella, quella combinazione di straordinari interpreti e, e, e anche cose vere che abbiamo utilizzato, musica e, e proprio un qualcosa di, per me, per la mia esperienza, di abbastanza unico, di cinema teatro. Uh, infatti proprio un grande attore italiano che ha visto il film mi disse proprio questo, che quelle sequenze del, del, del processo al, ma al Maxi di Palermo eh, erano una combinazione misteriosa e quasi magica di cinema e teatro il teatro di solito va contro il cinema no? il teatro... e invece eh, siamo riusciti tutti insieme a fare penso un buon risultato un ottimo risultato um, uh, So Marco totally agrees with uh, what Francesca has said Um, so that uh, the um, scenes of the trial, the scenes of the Maxi Processo, uh, really recall um, um, almost um, operas, uh, some, works, some works of opera. And um, Mark has also said that they have been very, very lucky because those scenes were actually shot uh, in the same courtrooms where the, the Maxi Processo took place. 
And in these scenes, they uh, mingle and mix uh, theatrical and grotesque uh, elements that were actually uh, adopted by the mafiosi to sort of slow down uh, the process, the, the, sorry, the trial, and hope that the trial would, uh, of course, slow down. Uh, and uh, what, uh, and the result is really um, a mix between cinema and theater. And that's uh, what actually uh, an actor has, uh, a famous Italian actor has told to, to Marco uh, that those sequences, uh, uh, are uh, a mysterious and almost magical combination of um, uh, cinema and theater. And Marco is uh, very satisfied uh, about may, this. May I say something? Yes, please. No, volevo aggiungere che eh, è stato importante, adesso non solo per il ritmo, ma proprio per, sì, anche per il ritmo, per la sonorità del film, non vorrei aggiungere l'importanza della lingua siciliana e quindi il tempo, il suono, il ritmo che il parlare siciliano, de, il, il, perché Pier Francesco ha parlato quasi un, un siciliano praticamente perfetto ed era circondato da, da attori siciliani e questa music musicalità della lingua ha contribuito al senso così musicale, così forte di musicale che c'è nel film. La lingua, la lingua è stata veramente un valore aggiunto fortissimo per il film, ecco. Um, so Francesca is uh, adding that it was not only the editing rhythm that helped um, the musicality of the film, but also the Sicilian dialect that mm. was uh, spoken, of course, by um, Pier Francesco and by uh, the other actors that uh, were Sicilian. Um, Obviously, um, Pier Francesco. So, oh, yes, please, Maria. Yes, I mean, also I would like to, to say little something because you know you notice Ian that I didn't respond your question you know between <laughs> these two things the epic thing and the intimate story because I was thinking here I just think there we cannot separate these things it's just one big thing and that's so beautiful how Marco uh, understood it and 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 made the film it's really one thing it's personal and it's the his public life Tommaso Buscetta's public life is and his personal life is one big thing I was thinking about it so that's why I think I could not separate things because si parlava di musica si parlava di opera quel il la sequenza del processo no certo il ma una sua penso grande unità insomma e anche una sua diciamo originalità senza eh, essere troppo presuntuosi ah, quando ti dico per Francesco ti ricordi dice, no, ma la prima scena in qualche modo mi ricordava un po' il padrino sì sì poi sì è possibile che ricordasse il padrino non me ne importa nulla il film ha una sua comunque eh, originalità originale nel senso che è anche diverso tutti noi prendiamo Uh, immagini e le trasformiamo da tanti, dai, dalle migliaia di film che noi abbiamo visto dalla nostra vita naturalmente e può darsi che la prima sequenza ricordasse il padrino, però è anche un'altra cosa. Um, so what Mark is saying that is that um, in his opinion the traitor is uh, a totally uh, uh, original movie um, and it's unique in a way. Of course, some scenes might recall other films, such as the, the first the first scene might recall some scenes of The Godfather, but that's totally normal. We all take what we see in real life and then, uh, well, I would say artists take what they see in real life and then um, take it into their art, so. Again, yeah. thinking about that opening scene, and you're right, I, when I saw it, I thought, okay, I, I recognize a world cinematically that, that, that is something that, that I've grown up with. But what I really liked about the film, yes, we have that setting. Yes, we have that text at the beginning telling us that it's uh, Santa Rosalia Day. We know this gathering is very important of all these people and something's going to happen. But what fascinated me is then you cut to Benedetto on the beach, which completely goes against genre expectations. And that's one of the pleasures of this film, of seeing throughout that you think you're getting the story you've seen before. And in actual fact, what you are getting is a very, very subjective perspective 
on this world. Um, and I, I, I think for me, I, this is less a question, more of a statement. I think that's why this film works for me, Marco. No way. Arrivato. No, che ha detto? Cioè, sì. Che il, secondo lui il film eh, sfida qualunque eh, definizione di, di genere in un certo senso. Ah, sì, è sì, sì, quello sì. che non ti aspetti. È, è il film che non ti aspetti. Sì, sì. Penso di sì. Poi naturalmente eh, ci sono state, concludo, eh, anche de degli atteggiamenti insomma, verso gli autori in Italia, in Europa. Insomma, se poi il film ha anche un certo successo, c'è quasi, quasi una meraviglia. No, no, il successo noi non l'abbiamo cercato sicuramente, però in effetti è un film che, in cui mi sento di, ave, di essermi giocato interamente in modo diverso, ma che evidentemente per la sua storia, per gli interpreti, per, per quello che è, ha avuto una, un interesse, un'attenzione eh, particolare da parte del pubblico, ecco, questo sì... Eh... Ma non, non c'è stata nessuna, eh, sarebbe stato anche sciocco, anche ingenuo, anche eh, ispirarsi a dei generi. No, la cosa bella è che abbiamo combinato tante cose, Quante, mia, abbiamo visto nella nostra esperienza migliaia, migliaia, migliaia di, di assassini, di, di delitti, di cose, però abbiamo lavorato un po' per conto nostro, ecco, tutti insieme. Uh, so what Mark is saying is that they didn't really look um, uh, for uh, success and in a way he has done a, a very different uh, work from uh, what he has been used to do, uh, what, he has, what, what he usually does. Um, but uh, they were all very surprised because probably especially because of the, of the subject, uh, the traitor really catched the um, both public opinion and the public's attention. And uh, um, um, they tried to put together uh, different things um, uh, and um, um, they were very surprised with, with, the, with the result and with the attention that the movie caught in the public. Uh, Pier Francesco, I want, I want to go back to a comment that uh, Francesca made about and a layer of the musicality of the film that to myself and most non-Italian speaking audiences won't necessarily pick up on, and that's the Sicilian. Um, and, and again, Maria, you can perhaps come in on this as well. Um, obviously, the dialect is actually something that becomes a part of the narrative. It's discussed during the trial. But could you both talk about um, the use of Sicilian and, and also um, getting the dialect right? It is, is it a difficult dialect? Well, it's a difficult dialect also because I, I wanted to learn the, the Sicilian of the 50s. I mean, thinking about when Buscetta was born and what kind of dialect he might have spoken. Also because now we used to, to hear a lot of Sicilian in, in our TV and it became kind of very generic Sicilian. Usually it's more on, of, of the area of Catania. So every everyone from Palermo would, would actually argue about this. But um, I wanted to learn the, 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 um, the dialect he might have spoken. And uh, so I found, uh, the production found me uh, a, a dialect coach. And, uh, and, and we worked together given also the fact that Buscetta actually didn't really like speaking in the dialect because he thought it was gross. So um, with all the material that I could gather, uh, I've listened for hours and hours to, to his tone of voice, something he was very proud of, to uh, the way he, he used to speak and to the formality of, of his way of speaking, which was very, very refined in a way. And, uh, and it gave me an, an idea of his mentality, of how he wanted people to look at him which is something very, very important for him and um, uh, the outer perspective that he had, I, I think was something he was really, really, really uh, careful with. And, um, but, but once we stepped out of what it was difficult for, for an actor, it gave us, I mean, it give, gave me a lot of freedom in, in this sense, through the, through the way, way of speaking, I found uh, a way of thinking and then on this, there's another layer, which is the way 
mafia people use the the dialect and the the words so once i've learned that i've understood for example that during the trial they were not speaking about what i might think they were speaking of so it's a code that's made of words and uh and the way you use them and uh, some words that might look absolutely normal are actually very offensive uh if you call somebody from the mafia senor you're just underestimating him you're saying uh, that he's not a don so you're saying he is not worth it, any attention and if you listen now you if you You've watched the movie three movie three three times, and I don't want you to watch it another time. I will, but but, <laughs> but during the trial, you will see that most of the time in the exchange he has with Kalo, he calls him deliberately, Signor, has to diminish to belittle his uh, uh, his dimension, and for them it's something absolutely unbearable. And another thing in the trial, they were absolutely. Um, they they owned the scene. They know absolutely how to be on stage, and they knew that not only they had the the the, the judges in front of them, but they had another judgment. It was the one of the people that were at the back, and the people outside, because while they were speaking, people outside was already knowing what they were talking about. So those layers are very, very fascinating, not only for an actor, but sociologically. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's really interesting to, to dig into that kind of world because it's, a, it's literally a culture itself. And Maria, what, what's interesting with your character is the way that she is, in a way she has both one foot in that world, but is also just that you, you get that sense that she has that slight distance, not just because she's a woman in this very, very, patriarchal misogynistic world but also through her upbringing in the society that she knows she has that distance yeah yeah she she keeps that and she takes care of the family she she i think you know somehow she she had an influence also to to help him start telling everything to the police to judge Falcone it's very I mean in the movie you see there is a scene that they talk on the phone and she's like you must you must tell them you must tell them you must talk you must talk so I think she had this influence and she was taking care of the family she was she would love him to get out of this life what was not possible until the end of their lives i mean you saw the film and she also took care of four children that she had two from the first marriage and two for the second marriage from the second marriage and then two that they had so she took care of these these children she was always beside him and I saw a documentary uh, because I had no information about this woman before. I only had access to these informations after. And then I could, I could hear this woman, I could hear her voice, I could you know, see her speaking about all, all, all the things that we knew from the film already. And such a strong woman, such a strong woman, really, and she loved him so much. It was a big, big, big love story between uh, love story between them. So um, that's that's it. I think she was always beside him, and that she loved him very, very much. Strong love and beautiful story. Yeah, but one thing that comes tragic, across tragic, but beautiful. Yes. Tragic, beautiful. Yeah. The one thing that comes across from chatting with you all about this film is the extraordinary level of research that, that has gone into the, the preparation before you even started filming. Perhaps I'll start with you on this, uh, Marco. Could you talk about your research? I'm assuming outside of the filming that you all spent quite a lot of time researching in Sicily itself. Yes, we have done a research quite long. Poi capita sempre a me, quando 
anche la produzione del film, se potrà parlarne anche Simone, è stata abbastanza complessa e questa lentezza, questo ritardo, chiamiamolo così, secondo me ha favorito anche eh, l'approfondimento di tante cose. Io che sono del nord sentivo la necessità non tanto di diventare siciliano che sarebbe ridicolo dirlo ma sicuramente il, lo stare il più possibile l'ascoltare il più possibile questa lingua come diceva Francesca una lingua veramente una lingua che eh, ha determinato comunque l'identità eh, del film anche se per voi inglesi magari non non vedete molto le differenze, però è una differenza molto molto importante. E anche eh, l'avere, l'essere lì e l'aver potuto nei limiti del possibile eh, lavorato con moltissimi attori siciliani. Eh, questo, questa ricerca sui libri, con le persone, ma anche sullo stare lì, ehm, non è da poco quando dicevo che... Eh, aver potuto utilizzare la stessa aula del maxi processo per fare un, una sequenza così importante è stato estremamente importante ecco e anche la prima scena aver girato in sicilia insomma, tutte cose che hanno ci hanno obbligato ad allungare la preparazione però che poi si ritrovano come si suol dire nel film um, so the research uh, for the movie was um, uh, quite long and the productive uh, process quite complex, um, especially because it was, of course, um, in different places around the world. But uh, what Marco is saying uh, is that such delay, he calls it so, um, also helped them uh, help to the whole cast and the whole production um, uh, going deeper and deeper and deeper into the subject matter. Uh, and um, also, um, uh, again, going back to what uh, Francesca was saying before about a Sicilian dialect, uh, UK, UK audiences, English audiences, uh, non-Italian speaking audiences might not really notice it, but uh, the fact that um, a big part of the movie is uh, um, is shot in, in Sicilian, really determined the identity of the film. Um, and again, in addition to research done on books, uh, research done with people and research done on the spot. Uh, so in, um, uh, in the different places the, the film was shot in and listening to the place really, um, on the one hand, uh, obliged, um, obliged them to delay the production, but in the end, the result is actually seen on scene. It I'm, really makes a difference. And Pier Francesco, I, I assume you were heavily involved in this, this research process as well. Yeah, it's one of the few occasions where I, uh, where I felt very bad when we ended up, when we finished the movie, because I wanted to dig more, I wanted to know more. You know, when you have to, to deal with those kind of characters, you're dealing with your history. Uh, there, there's so many connections about the life of this man and Italian history that you want to know more. You have to know that trials are still going on to determine, finally, if ever, if there was any kind of connection between secret services and mafia for the death of, uh, of Falcone's um, uh, and, and Bossolino. So that is something that interests you not only as an actor but, uh, but as a as a as a citizen as um uh, you know as actors we're always looking for something that's truthful uh believable something we can rely on the human beings what moves us what are the the meanings of what we do and while you have the chance to 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 get in touch with those big mysteries because those are still big mysteries you just can't stop for the sake of your performance. You want to know more as a man. You want to know the, 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 the country you live in. You want to know if you could do something or if somebody else could have done something for this thing not to happen or to make something for these things not to happen again. So it's not just an involvement as an actor, which I am privileged to have the chance to do, but, but also something more. And it touched me profoundly. We kept researching while we were shooting. Some of the scenes came out even at the end because I, I detected a little bit. I was, 
I was in touch with the lawyers. I, I've been trying to, to call and, and um, people from either sides, from both sides. And I can't say that I put myself in danger, but maybe I did. But once you know something, you want to know more. Just for the sake of, of honesty, in general, honesty to the audience, honesty to your work, honesty to the, the privilege of working with, uh, with Marco. So it, it's something you, you just want, don't want to keep for yourself. And I remember when we finished, we finished at the end of the year and I had to start uh, immediately another project. And I felt that, that the moment I was detaching from, from the movie was painful for me. I, I want to ask a question about the mindset of, of playing this character because um, I've been reading recent news reports on the Ndrangheta trials in Calabria um, and these stories of these incredibly powerful bosses who are moving billions of, of euros, dollars around the world and yet they often live in caves when they're on the run they have these hovels that they live in. Money doesn't seem to be of any concern whatsoever. It's about the power. I'm just really curious. And I know that, it, that this character actually says in the film that he's less interested in, in the power and more interested in, in the love. Um, but I am curious about how long it takes to get into the mindset of playing well, the character. It, it, it takes a while. First of all, because as, as I think you've understood, you, I come from another perspective completely. So I think these people are criminals and I still think and believe that Pusheta is one. And so I am not forgiving him for choosing to, to, to belong to the mafia because his family didn't belong to the mafia. That means that he wanted to. Then I think that the, uh, the, the goal of an actor is to to, to just to, to put yourself aside and little by little try to understand what are the motivations, what kind of, of situations in life might, might have led you to make such a choice. And I surprised myself in feeling some points uh, of contact between his life and my life. I'm a family man, he's a family man. He, he really loves his family in his own way. Then there's another aspect, which are the codes of mafia. Maf mafia is a very hierarchical, uh, um, hierarchical, sorry. Hierarchical. Uh, hierarchical. Hierarchical, sorry. I was, I was right. Um, <laughs> um, organization. So the, the thing you were saying, for example, it's, uh, it's mandatory. You, if you have money, you don't have to show you have money because that says a lot about your ethical um, uh, values they don't really care for money, but they care for what money stands for. Stand for. So people know you are very rich. People know you, you have the money a government, uh, a country, a continent has. But you don't have to show it because that's not the point. Because mafia was born as a collaboration between equals, believe it or not. And I've heard some judges telling me well, you know, before Falcone was killed, mafia had a utility in, 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 in Sicily. Then one of the things that was very helpful for me was reading a, a booklet by a German sociologist. And he, being detached from the Italian perspective, really describes it uh, in a very, very clear and, uh, and transparent way. And there are, there's a reason why Mafia was born in Sicily. And it's old as man. It's uh, the, the, the first little villages are from uh, people who were escaping from, from the Normans in little villages that were not easily uh, uh, traceable. And they were there and they, with the violence in group of 10 and still the group of 10 is existing in the Mafia. The group of ten they took the rule of the of the little village, where the roads were were very difficult. Now, if you go to Sicily now, you still have problems with the roads. It's there's no, there's no train connecting uh, Palermo and Catania. So even now, you can find the reasons why such a a, a very 
a close uh, culture was born and why they had to build their own rules, their own social rules, tribal rules. Again, I'm not, I'm not forgiving them. I'm not forgetting them, forgiving them, but, but I'm starting to think, I have to start to think why. Bushita was the last of 17. Uh, his father and mother were very old. Did he have, did he have, a, have the chance to play with his brothers and sisters? Was he attracted by the fact that he was in a group of people, all equal, that were looking at him, not judging him, but saying, hey, you're welcome, you're brave. Maybe as a man, if I, if I think as a man, if I think as a boy, that could have been attractive to me as well. So little by little is just forgiving yourself and, and trying to dig into that, that uh, kind of flow that you work, uh, and that, that, that you build and you, you start to believe it. And then this takes you to what might have been his, um, uh, his emotional life. I'm sorry, it was too long. No, 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 no. I'm still <laughs> passionate about it. <laughs> I've, I've, I've received some questions in from audience members. Um, first of all, I'm guessing this is Simone and, and Marco. Um, someone's asking about the use of the actual courtroom. Um, Simone, was this an easy thing to get uh, permission for? And I assume it helped the when you said well actually it's Marco Bellocchio is making the film so please give us the courtroom um yeah it was quite Marco bye no, bye tempo eh, capisco sempre di meno e sai l'età no ma non ho capito bene la domanda è a me o a te a tutte e due è tipo l'uso della dell'aula bunker quanto è quanto quanto è stato importante per te e quanto è stato difficile se ce l'hanno data o no. Cioè, ottenerla, quanto è stato complicato ottenerla. No, semplicemente molto sempre... Questo è un film dove si combina eh, realtà... Tutto, l'abbiamo detto tante volte, tutto quello che accade nel film, tutti i fatti, sono, partono dalla realtà, partono da, sono fatti veri. Molte battute, molte parole, sono vere nei dialoghi tra Falcone e Buscetta. Poi naturalmente ehm, è un film che partendo, un po' come anche questa serie che noi faremo su... che partendo dalla realtà, da fatti reali, poi eh, da sé in qualche modo ehm, si moltiplicano, cambiano, si trasformano e combinano fantasia e realtà. Ecco, questa è la formula. Naturalmente, per quel che riguarda il, l'aula bunker, io sentivo, ma non, non parlo in termini romantici, di ispirazione, però che quelle mura, che quelle gabbie, che, quel, eh, eh, che insomma, tutte quelle panche del, del pubblico, in qualche modo combinate con tutta una serie di, eh, ehm, di fatti reali che erano raccontati, in qualche modo costituivano un, um, un mix uh, um, che ha uh, poi um, da cui sono venute fuori delle belle immagini delle immagini uh, sorprendenti ecco non, uh, e quindi questo è il uh, poi naturalmente ci sono state anche tante altre scene assolutamente inventate uh, e tutte legate al alla bravura degli attori e agli ambienti e poi anche tutta una serie di, di delitti e, e, anche lì c'era il problema di, di non essere convenzionali cioè eh, i delitti di mafia ne abbiamo visti talmente tanti che eh, e quindi abbiamo sentito di abbiamo cercato di trovare anche per, per questi un un loro stile particolare, uno stile che si combinasse con lo stile generale del film. So Marco is saying, as we were saying before, as he was saying before, that uh, of course the movie starts from real facts, um, starts from reality, uh, and uh, many of the scenes you see in the movie actually are based on real facts, even dialogues. Um, and uh, then they almost automatically uh, turn, uh, take li a life of, the, of their own, we can say. Um, 
and uh, they turn into what you see on the screen. And Marco is also saying that the cages, the walls, and the benches of the um, uh, maxi trial courtroom um, almost spoke for themselves in a way. Uh, and uh, they uh, are so entrenched in the story that they cannot avoid and uh, inserting them in the movie. Um, and then, um, um, where he was talking about the killing scenes and the murders, uh, and um, he was saying how um, they had to, tr to find a specific style for, for those as well, and uh, avoid uh, being conventional uh, and um, find a way to make them stand out and surprise uh, the audience. Um, yeah, it's very interesting. I, again, going back to this idea of cinema, and we have this history of, of representations of the mafia. And I thought how um, fascinating that just in the space of two years, um, there's your film and Martin Scorsese's The Irishman in that where we have the killings in The Irishman and we have the date, the time in the future when they're killed and we cut to them. And here you have the extraordinary counting clock, the, the, just the numbers going up, which we, it's great because we don't need to see all the killings, but we feel the sense of horror at just the sheer scale of what's happening at this moment in time. Beh, certo, il problema della rappresentazione dei delitti, noi l'abbiamo anche cercato di trasformarla anche con questa contabilità. Se lei ha visto eh, ad ogni delitto c'è un numero, proprio perché allora, ecco è la storia, allora in Sicilia erano talmente tanti i crimini e i delitti quasi quotidiani che c'era un giornale molto famoso loro che adesso non c'è più che eh, faceva il calcolo ogni, ogni giorno c'era il numero sempre crescente di delitti e su questo ritmo, su questo tempo che è anche un, dato un tempo musicale abbiamo cercato di eh, dare essenzialmente la rappresentazione di questi delitti nel tempo più breve possibile. Infatti lei ha visto che molti delitti sono ehm, eseguiti in modo molto sbrigativo, insomma, eh, proprio perché quello era eh, per me la caratteristica, eh, il modo di rappresentarli onde evitare il, la convenzione. La convenzione. Um, Marco was exactly linking to what you have just said, uh, and uh, he was saying that the, the, the growing number of uh, killings that you see on, on screen links back in a way to what a newspaper called Lora, uh, that um, no longer exists, used to do in, back in the days. So every day they used to give the number uh, of uh, people that were were killed. And so to, to Marco, this was uh, really the way to uh, make um, the war of mafia and all the deaths that happened in those days less conventional as possible, uh, giving uh, um, in the most uh, essential way the number of killings and giving them in the shortest time possible. I've got um, just uh, two more audience questions. Uh, one, Francesca, I can, if I can bring you in on this, it's a specific question about the torture sequence in, in Rio, um, and which I also thought was incredibly powerful because we start off with the shot of the forest on the mountain and, and, and don't realize what's going on. Uh, could you and, and Marco perhaps talk about how you constructed that sequence? Me la puoi tradurre? Sì, certo. Allora, um, è una domanda al pubblico e è una cosa che ha colpito anche molto uh, Ian, è, è la sequenza delle torture. Um, appunto inizia Rio con uh, la, la, la scena della foresta uh, sulla montagna e non, e non si capisce cosa, cosa andrà a succedere. E vorrebbero chiedere come l'avete costruita a te e Marco. Uh, se non ricordo male, noi abbiamo fatto una sintesi di quella scena, perché quella scena della tortura avveniva in un momento e la scena dell'elicottero avveniva in un altro. Fanno parte di due momenti della vita di Buscetta. E... Allora, per quanto riguarda me, la sensazione... Il, il modo della, di, di, di come poi è stata costruita mi è venuto appoggiando un pezzo musicale. Il film era lungo, quindi avevamo 
comunque necessità di, di operare delle sintesi. Io ho appoggiato su quella sequenza, dopo l'arresto di Buscetta, ho appoggiato, mentre lo portano via, eh, ho appoggia avevo appoggiato, cosa, adesso non c'è più, abbiamo poi cambiato il pezzo, ma per dire come le cose vengono anche casualmente, io ho appoggiato un pezzo di, eh, come si chiama? Simone, aiutami. Elvis Presley. Di Elvis Presley. Uh, che sarebbe O Sole Mio, uh, cantata da Elvis Presley in inglese, uh, adesso non mi ricordo il titolo. In Now or Never. Now or Never, Now or Never. E um, su quel pezzo io poi ho costruito la sequenza, cioè inserendo sull'elicottero le torture. Quindi è diventata, proprio grazie a, a, a quella musica che mi ha suggerito questa idea, poi è rimasta questa idea ed è diventata un'unica sequenza. Non era così in sceneggiatura. Quella è stata una cosa che è, stata, è venuta fuori al montaggio. E la suggestione era interessante perché comunque lui guardava, lui aveva ancora i segni delle torture e guardava la moglie. Quindi siamo abbiamo fatto una rottura temporale su questa, su questa sequenza che però diciamo dal punto di vista su, della suggestione delle, e dell'emozione secondo me era superiore all'avere le due scene separate cioè si rafforzavano l'una e l'altra quindi questo è stato il processo eh, che mi ha portato a fare questa cosa cioè è, è, è stata determinante anche la, la musica per me su questa cosa qua perché si è costruita una sequenza musicale piuttosto che una solo realistica di, eh, di torture Uh, so what Francesca is saying uh, is that um, this scene was really built on a time rupture. So it was a synthesis between two different, um, uh, actually, moments in Buscetta's life. Um, uh, so the torture and the helicopter scene actually belong to different moments in his life. But in this case, they were synthesized and put uh, together as to achieve um, a higher emotional uh, reaction. Uh, I would say. And what Francesca um, is saying is that um, um, the synthesis was actually suggested by a, a piece of music, uh, and it's uh, Now or Never by Elvis Presley. And um, by listening to this, to, to this piece, to this piece of music, um, the synthesis was, was actually, the synthesis of the two scenes uh, was actually uh, suggested to them and they decided to um, um, change the script because of this. Uh, the, um, um, this part, this sequence uh, originally was not supposed to be uh, in this way according to the script. Ma e poi la musica è stata cambiata ed è stato messo, ed è stata messa la canzone che poi Buscetta Pavino e Buscetta Vero canteranno poi nel film l'uno e nel finale, nel, fi nel vero filmato di, filmato di repertorio, il vero Buscetta. Insomma. And e then, ho fatto questa scelta poi successiva, quindi la musica l'abbiamo cambiata. E poi la song was actually changed, so it was no longer Now or Never by uh, Elvis Presley, but it was, uh, the, um, it was changed into the song that uh, Buscetta uh, will sing. Uh, in the very, very um, um, end of the movie and that Pier Francesco will sing in one of the um, closing scenes of, of the movie. And obviously, as, as, um, as horrible as that scene is, the fact that it was shot in Brazil did mean, Pier Francesco and, and Maria, you got to have a nice time hanging out in Rio de Janeiro for a couple of days. Yeah. It Must be pretty like, cool. <laughs> it was pretty cool, yeah. Um, I want to go back. No doubt. <laughs> I want to go back. She's lucky enough to live there, but I'm not. So, I mean, I can't wait. I really can't wait to go back. I've just got um, one final audience question here. Um, it's, I'm a Sicilian, a Sicilian from Palermo. In Palermo during and um, even years after a trial, um, to be called Buscetta was used as an insult. Buscetta's son was a way for kids to say, your friend is among uh, the worst people. So a question for Mr. Favino. Um, and I think you've touched on this a little bit, uh, Pier Francesco. How difficult was it to wear the dress of a traitor? Or like Buscetta, it wasn't difficult because you didn't feel a traitor at all, but instead a different kind of hero. It does throw up this idea of hero. And I don't know how Buscetta was represented in the media at the time. Um, but I, I, I think Falcone, for me, from what I've read about it, is the hero. But Buscetta is this very odd person. And you said about this self-interest that he had. 
but what he ended up doing was in the long term for the greater good. Well, it was for the good for, for our history. Uh, I, uh, I can't help but thinking that he was very manipulative. Yeah. And that says a lot about his intelligence or cleverness. He was very clever. And uh, he knew how to, to, um, to turn uh, history on his side. Uh, I ha it was very difficult to find something about him that he didn't want me to, to find. He didn't want us to find. He wrote his own legend. He left only things that dealt with the image he wanted to leave uh, behind him. And that says a lot about his intelligence. Uh, you, you would r rarely meet somebody who would not speak well of him. And I'm not talking about mafia people, of course. And I'm talking about you know, journalists or, or their wives that were absolutely uh, charmed by him. So uh, he managed very well to, to give an idea of himself that could slightly make you think that uh, was close to a heroic figure. I've never thought this from the very beginning. And as you said, rightly, Falcone is the only hero, but in the only interview that Falcone gave, uh, he said that, he said that for him, it was more important to have uh, the, the, um, the collaboration of Contorno than the one of Buscetta because Buscetta knew how to hide things. And I also think that Buscetta died having said 35, 40% of what he knew. So if he had said everything, I might say, yeah, maybe you, you, you did some good. And then there's also, there's also a, a little, uh, maybe a detail, but I thought it was very hard to believe to a man who's son of a, of a mirror maker, a glass maker, and keeps changing his features since he is 35 to the end of his life, telling everybody I am who I am and keeping changing his face. And I think this says a lot about him, about his psychology, about his way of thinking and about his way of wanting to manipulate people around him. And I admire his uh, stamina and his force of um, manipulation, even with himself. I believe he believed very deeply in what he imagined and built. But to say that he not, was honest, I, I don't think so. I, I, I think that he was a criminal and I will always think this. Finally, Marco, um, from the moment you, that you first had a conversation uh, about this idea for the film to where you are now, has your opinion of Bouchetta shifted at all? La mia opinione non è cambiata? Eh? O è cambiata? Vuoi dire? Chiede se la tua posizione è cambiata dopo che hai fatto il film. No, non è cambiata. Non è, no, non è cambiata, nel senso che, come diceva anche Pier Francesco, non è un eroe, è un personaggio eh, simpat simpatico, cioè, con, eh, però non c'è stata... Mh, noi non ci siamo posti dei problemi morali, però non c'è stata una specie di... Uh, complicità col criminale sicuramente Buscetta a questa storia ha compiuto dei delitti anche piuttosto pesanti uh, qualcuno gli ne attribuisce di più qualcun altro di meno però sicuramente uh, lui credo abbia sinceramente capito che quella mafia là uh, naturalmente lui si è difeso col fatto che erano gli altri che avevano tradito i principi però che quella mafia là era finita per cui un uomo che poi nel, nel, nel tempo della sua vita ha, eh, ha, eh, ha capito ragazzi, ha capito che eh, è baffa, ha capito e va da solo scusate non so di come cazzo va e lui ha capito <ride> che eh, eh, che un 
che un'epoca era finita. Quindi lui conclude eh, la propria vita perché eh, rappresenta, eh, la conclude in modo direi naturale, insomma, perché il suo mondo in fondo era finito. Eh, il suo mondo eh, che era stata tutta la sua vita era finito. Ecco, in questo senso eh, il film, poi speriamo di fare altri film, speriamo di fare delle altre cose belle, però ha una sua conclusione con cui io non mi sento né in, in, in vantaggio né in svantaggio. Ecco, è andata così ed è andata bene. Uh, so Mark is saying that his opinion on um, on Mushata has not changed uh, since um, hearing about hearing about him for the first time. Uh, of course, he has never considered him a hero, um, and he's not a character uh, he is sympathizing with. With, of course, he's a criminal. Some people um, think he's a criminal more than others, uh, and. Um, Um, in a way, uh, at the end of um, what, Mar what Marco is also saying is that uh, Buscetta, um, uh, in a way, decides to end his life. Uh, Buscetta's life ends in an almost natural way um, uh, because uh, the, uh, he's conscious of the fact that uh, the mafia uh, he knew um, is over uh, and that an era is over um, uh, when he... Uh, goes to the uh, to the justice side uh, and um, uh, of course Mark is open to to do more films in the future but he's satisfied with how the film ends and with how the character has developed in the film um, and um, we're going to have to draw this um, interview to a close as well Marco I do hope that's not one of the remaining members of a Cosa Nostra contacting you phoning you to tell you not to say any more But, but anyway, we are, we are going to end this now. So, um, well, il silenziatore non funzionava, scusate. Scusatemi, ma io cercavo in tutti i modi di spegnerlo e non si spegneva. Comunque è stata una bella conversazione, spero che... Se... A, me, a me è piaciuta e spero che sia piaciuta anche a voi. It was a very pleasurable conversation and he hopes that you all enjoyed it too. Well, thank you very much to BAFTA and Modern Films for organizing this event. Raquel, thank you for, for translating for us. And our guest today, thank you all so much and congratulations on the film. Grazie. Bye. Grazie. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Ciao a tutti. Ciao. Bye-bye. Ciao. Ciao. Ciao, Maria Fernanda. Ciao, Francesca. Ciao, bella. Ciao. Ciao, Victor. Bye-bye. Ciao. Buonasera. Arrivederci. Grazie, arrivederci. Thank you very much. Spegniamo? Cosa già? Thank you. Ciao. Bye bye. Grazie anche alla traduttrice. Grazie. Piacere. Ciao. Ciao cari, ciao. E tu, Picchio, dovresti rispondere. Era una bellocchia, sicuramente lei voleva dire la bellocchia.